It's Sunday, July 16, 2023. I'm Anthony Davis. Welcome to The Weekend Show, where we take a deep dive into the news of the week. You can support my work and independent journalism at patreon.com slash five minute news. Our guest today is an expert on cults, undue influence and brainwashing. He's the author of four books, including The Cult of Trump. And you may have heard him as the host of the Influence Continuum podcast right here on the Midas Media Network. And he has some new courses, which I want to talk to him about. It's Dr. Stephen Hassan. Welcome back to The Weekend Show. Thank you, Anthony. And thanks for your good work. And congratulations on your uh, your award for your show. Congratulations. You. Yes, this show got the, got a, won a telly award for journalism and news. And so I'm grateful to you because you're one of my previous guests. And, and so really that's, the award goes to my guests and my, and my viewers. Um, just tell me, before we start talking about Trump and cults and all the stuff that you specialize in, tell me about these courses that you're doing, because this is a very kind of interesting uh, opportunity, isn't it? Sure. So um, people have been asking me, how do we deprogram millions of people who are in the cult of Trump and in so many other uh, uh, cult uh, authoritarian cults? So I've been working for years on to develop a course initially for clinicians and mental health professionals to foundationally understand this is a dissociative disorder. People have phobias that have been installed in their minds and very specific things that need to be done to help them. And so I decided to put that on my website and and then I augmented it with a course for just the general public, concerned people, former members, and then in um, March, Anthony, I was invited to go to Utah with by Do- Dr. John Dolin, who is a six, former sixth generation uh, Mormon uh, and a psychologist who had been excommunicated for speaking out for gay rights. And so I went out there, did a few interviews with him, but we did a workshop together and videotaped the workshop. So we have a recovery from Mormonism workshop but frankly i think anyone born or raised in a cult would get a lot out of listening because the patterns and the problems are very similar it's so interesting I, i'm i have a friend from utah and i've heard all about his kind of mormon family and it, it is it is incredible isn't it and i do today want to talk about this line between religion extremist religions fundament, fundamentalism and cults because you know it's an area of your expertise something i know very little about very keen to talk about that i want to talk about obviously you know what trump has been up to now he's trying to get his court case moved because obviously he wants to win the election first so that then he can pardon himself so we'll take a look at that and obviously jack smith's having having none of that i'm also interested if we have time in talking about climate change and how Obviously, we've had the hottest last couple of weeks, been the hottest couple of weeks in history, right? 125,000 years. And still, like, half the country deny that it's a real thing. And I was thinking, you know, that's got to be part of the cult. It's got to be a, a mental health disorder. It's got to be something that goes deeper than just, you know, not being able to kind of look at the data and, and be like, yeah, there might be a, a problem. And famously on Fox News this last couple of weeks, they're going... It's just the summer, and it really isn't. So we'll we'll look at that. But first, let's use a couple of examples in looking at Christian nationalism, because that Senator Josh Hawley, who's the one with the fist at January 6th, um, he's fielding allegations of Christian nationalism this week after he tweeted a quote falsely attributed to a founding father claiming the United States was founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he later tweeted a thread of other quotes along similar lines. And many Americans who advocate for Christian nationalism actually have kind of little interest in religion. And, and, and it seems like it's just become a kind of rally cry. So what defines Christian nationalism? And is it, is it a cult? And I should preface this by saying we're not criticizing Christianity or people who are moderate you know, believers. It's This is an extremist form of the religion. Right. So uh, let me just start with the founders of our country were very explicit 
they understood the dangers of church and state being connected, and they deliberately went out of their way to want to create a wall between church and state. And what Christian nationalists, dominionists, uh, new apostolic reformationists, they're all trying to create a false narrative about the history of the founding of the United States that has nothing to do with reality. And it's very interesting to me with all the Supreme Court justice abuse stories uh, that these um, conservative justices are all saying we're, we're, we're foundationalists and traditionalists. We can't add anything to the Constitution, but they're ignoring this humongous lie about the founding principles of our republic. Um, so the bottom line is, is that they try to say that um, God created America for the Christians, forgetting that indigenous people have been here for tens of thousands of years, and their property was stolen and their resources, and they were victimized by genocide and kidnapping and residential schools and and smallpox on blankets, um, deliberate biological warfare against them. And so many treaties were signed that that the government has not honored. So but we'll put the indigenous people aside. Back to the these people who are the Michael Flynn's uh, the Josh Hawleys, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, etc. They're all involved with this political ideology that's aimed at destroying women's rights, gay rights, and um, using religious freedom as a cudgel to discriminate against anyone who doesn't believe or who is a minority believer. I'm a Jew, so I'm a minority. Uh, we're not legitimate by that ideology. Um, and so it really is problematic in terms of anyone who cares about human rights or freedom or democratic uh, democracy and science, frankly, as well. It's the rewriting of history that makes a claim that you're only American if you're white, Christian, cisgender, voting Republican. It, it, it's, it's, it's very narrow, isn't it? And there's no room for nuance. And it actually goes against most of the values of, of Christianity. Love thy neighbor and the like. Yeah. And, and wealthy people can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And as you do to the least in my kingdom, you do to me. That was Jesus's words. These are people who claim to be prophets or apostles, who get claim to get direct revelation from God. Uh, they Many of them speak in tongues and claim to cast out demons and do faith healings. And they have a, a phobia indoctrination against sat satanic demons that will invade you if you're not blindly obedient to the prophet or the apostle. And it's the leaders of these mega churches and smaller churches as well that have this ideology um, that are following their prophecy that Trump won the 2020 election. So even though Chris Krebs, appointed by Trump, said the election was fair and won by Biden, Attorney General Barr, I mean, just over 40 plus lawsuits yeah, that six, 62 failed. court cases that's yeah. Right, yeah so but the 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 point is is when you're in a mind control cult you're not allowed to think independently or critically about your leadership because you ex ex accept it as the word of god and i want to just say now anthony you know me a bit you know that i got interested in this because i was recruited into a front group of the moon cult back in 1974 and dropped out of college and, and became a fanatic and a right-wing fascist who believed democracy was satanic and that we needed a theocracy to rule the world and talked about infiltrating the government. My former cult was at January 6th, and my former cult has the Rod of Iron Ministries, an AR-15 gun cult 
and a factory that makes them, and two compounds, one in Tennessee and one near Waco, Texas, training people for violent civil war as we speak. So I feel very personally involved in the in the effort to expose the dangers of this horrible, destructive mind control cult that owns the Washington Times. And, uh, and by the way, I don't know if you caught the Washington Post article about Trump making a billion dollars. And That's and, right. It turned out some of it was from speaking engagements for the, for the Moonies, right? Two million dollars for two talks where and it was after January 6th, I would add, and I would say Pence also spoke, Pompeo also spoke, and Esper, and they all got paid, but not as much as Trump. But I heard what Trump said, and he was endorsing Hak Jahan, the widow of Sun Myung Moon, who died in 2012, as the main cult leader, saying how wonderful she was and what great work she was doing. And this is a destructive authoritarian mind control cult that is absolutely opposed to everything we hold dear. It's very difficult, isn't it, when you're talking about people's religious beliefs. You don't want to insult people. You don't want to push people so much and tell them that they're wrong. You know, I, I, I'm an atheist, I guess. I've never really thought about it, but I've, I've never had any time for religion in my in my life but I went to a Christian school as a kid and I learned the Bible did Bible studies so I, I've kind of had a very wide-ranging view of, of religion but I've chosen not to follow a religion and I choose not to bring my children up in any religion they can choose to do whatever they want when they come of age as long as right. it's not the, the Moonies <laughs> and and yet we are faced now here in the U.S., in a situation where religion has worked its way so deeply into politics, because these people that you mentioned, the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene, I mean, she is effectively the deputy speaker of, of the House of Representatives now. She's pretty much doing most of Trump's bidding. She's circumnavigating the, the speaker, Kevin McCarthy. She tried to bring about a vote on impeaching Joe Biden. The language that she uses is extremist at the very least. And when occasionally she lets slip stuff about how, you know, men are the authority and, you know, women should look after their men and all of this hierarchical kind of misogynistic stuff. I actually think there's probably quite a lot that she'd like to say that she's not saying so that she can remain mainstream and, and relevant in terms of her extremist views. But the point is, this is not a fringe group anymore. This is now at the center of the U.S. government. How do you roll this back? I mean, will it ever be rolled back, apart from Joe Biden and the Democrats winning all three branches of government in 2024? I mean, because, you know, this is in households now. We have Mums for Liberty who have managed to convince people that they're some kind of advocacy group looking after you know young people in schools and actually they're not they're just a christian fundamentalist group doing exactly the same as you're describing mm -hmm. but it's yeah. just very hard to kind of nail these people because they're using religion which is a very respect or it's a subject that we choose to respect when we converse they're choosing religion as as this kind of anchor point and and so you can't really criticize that well, yes, you can, uh, because if it's a political cult or a business cult using a religious front, you have to look at the behavior. Yeah. And legitimate groups um, don't do deceptive recruitment. There needs to be informed consent. There needs to be respect for conscience. There needs to be a, an allowance that you can read whatever you want to read, talk to whoever you want to talk to, including ex-members, uh, and the freedom to leave without fear or threats or intimidation. So I argue in my influence continuum that ethical groups and they can be cultish in the sense that people are very fervent and they spend a lot of time and energy, but they're using their own minds. They're using their own volition. They haven't abandoned their conscience. And they're following principles and values and religious beliefs 
that are based on love and on truth, on humility, and on service to help those who are less uh, able than we are. That, that's what the essence of, of a healthy religion is. And then on my influence continuum, the authoritarian cults, which include religious cults, but political cults, therapy cults, business cults, multi-level marketing cults, cults of personality, all of these are depending on lies, the excessive deception, manipulation, control of behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions, the bite model that I, that I did my doctoral dissertation on, to create what's called a pseudo-identity that's dependent and obedient on the group. So as a Mooney, the real Steve Hassan was viewed by the Mooney Steve Hassan as satanic and selfish, but the, the, the Mooney identity cloned of some young moon was a fanatic to do whatever the, the Messiah, air quotes, told me to do, which inc would have included if he said, take an AR-15, go to New York Times uh, and kill everybody you can. I would have done it and I wouldn't have hesitated. I wouldn't have had the ability to go, wait a minute, murdering people, is this really a good thing? No, because I was taught to do thought stopping. I had a new cult identity. The good news as a former fanatic um, is I got out <laughs> and I realized, yeah. oh, Chinese communist brainwashing principles. We studied this in the 50s. Robert J. Lifton, Margaret Singer, uh, Edgar Schein, Louis Jolly and West, they all talked about the techniques used to turn people in China against their own parents, against their own country, against their own values and their own best interests. So with that as the foundation, I've spent the last 47 years as a, as a mental health professional, as a former member, as an educator, and as an activist trying to say, hey, this doesn't happen to weak, stupid people with mental problems. They want smart, intelligent, educated, affluent people with skills who can work long hours for no pay to do their bidding. And I and was it legitimizes them as well, doesn't it? To have people who are smart, educated, and eloquent, it legitimizes their offering because you know they, they've got they've got good people. Let's talk about General Mike Flynn or former General Mike Flynn for a second because he's doing this kind of tour of the U.S. where he's putting on these huge events and it's it's all Christianity and Trump and, and you know, let's take back our country. And he's the, you know, former national security advisor uh, to Donald Trump. He twice lied to the FBI. He then got a pardon from Trump in the last week or so of Trump's uh, presidency. Trump wants him back to take the same role again if he was to win in November 2024, which is worrying to say the least. Does Mike Flynn know that he is applying all of these techniques that you describe? Or is Mike Flynn a victim as well? He's been radicalized, so he just is preaching the gospel. You know, what's the deal? Does he? Is there a, a level of consciousness with these people where he's like, right, I need to get as many of these people on side as I can? Or does he genuinely think that, like, this is the truth and he's just preaching the truth? I don't know. Um, I can tell you he's always been religious, Catholic. Um, and I can tell you that for when he was involved with American intelligence, he was using what's known as fourth generation warfare on other countries to disrupt them, to overthrow leaders that the U.S. thought was not in our best interest. And um, fourth generation warfare is something your listeners should really look into. I've done a number of blogs. I wrote about it in The Cult of Trump. But it's a concept in military strategy that was written up in the 80s by a guy named William Lind, L-I-N-D. Um, and he said that you need to create chaos, you need to create uncertainty in experts, in science, in institutions, 
In other words, disorient people so they'll be more easily persuaded to follow that authoritarian voice with cert that gives certainty. I've got this. I know more than the generals kind of thing. And I should say that he paired up with a Christian right strategist named Paul Weirich in the 80s. And I'll add that William Lind, I'm told, met Donald Trump in the White House. So we have a direct link with Flynn, fourth generation warfare. What's, what the public needs to understand is that we're not under only under threat of, of uh, the information warfare from Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, but from within, through people who want to overthrow our system of government and regulation, rule of law, and want to disrupt and distract our attention. And if I may come back to the beginning of your intro, I really believe the Saudis, the Putins, the Kochs, and the other oil, fossil fuel people have been embarking in a, in a very well-funded campaign of mind control to distract and confuse and disorient and put out disinformation so they can't be stopped from continuing to kill our planet for their greed. And coming back to, to Michael Flynn, my guess is he wants to recruit as many people as he wants, but he believes that his cause is just. He thinks he's doing God's bidding. He thinks he's fighting Satan, which by the way includes the Jews and the Muslims and the gays and everyone who's an atheist, you're you're also you yeah, know, I mean, an enemy of God. So yeah. it has someone been a puppet master to him and hypnotized him without his awareness? Possibly. But I'm a solutions guy. I don't want to just make people upset and yeah. fearful. I want to say there's a way to un undo this. It will take a lot of very strategic, organized, resource effort. But it comes down to psychoeducation, Anthony. It's pulling the curtain back to the Wizard of Oz and going, this isn't God, this isn't aliens from another dimension or emissaries of divine light. This is a very orchestrated information warfare now using social media, our data, and, and algorithms to mass scale persuade people to do things like who they're going to vote for, or who they're not going to vote for, to polarize so that the other authoritarian forces in the world can do whatever they want to without thinking about it. It's interesting how the foreign actors actually seem like the least of our problems <laughs> compared to the homegrown terrorism that we're seeing from white Christian nationalists, Marjorie Taylor Greene, wanting to shut down the FBI, wanting to shut down school boards, as you described, basically wanting to end the, the kind of institutions, the pillars of democracy in the US. They I'll just said to connect the dots it. with Russia and the Christian right that yeah. goes back decades and uh, Putin uses the Russian Orthodox Church and has been bringing the the right uh, Christian folks over to indoctrinate them, has sent Maria Putina to infiltrate the NRA and say, we need guns, we yeah. need our Second Amendment. Do you think people have assault rifles in Russia, private citizens? They'd be yeah. arrested for having a bullet, bullet yeah. on their person. And, but they can then say to their people, look at those Americans. They let people with assault rifles go in and shoot their children. We protect you, right? We, we often Think have about to... that if you're listening to this. This is a very orchestrated thing to use our, our um, own constitution against ourselves, our own freedom, to convince people we need guns to kill, to, be, yeah. to protect ourselves, but who's really behind it, aside from the gun manufacturers who are making a fortune? There are enemies. And, and, and uh, tragically, so many of the MAGA Republicans are currently siding with Putin in the war 
in Ukraine. Uh, we have to take a quick break for our sponsor, but we'll come straight back and talk more with Dr. Stephen Hassan. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your wacky neighbor or some sketchy message board. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial that is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I gave a fume to my sister, and she was shocked at how flavorful and fresh it tasted. It's easy to hold and perfectly balanced and, quite honestly, extremely fun to fidget with. The real wood material and sleek design definitely classes it up, and she feels pretty cool holding it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over a 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code WEEKEND to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code WEEKEND to save an additional 10% off your order today. We've all heard the famous line, try it free for 30 days. Yeah, well, that's just enough time to try it and then you completely forget about it. In fact, over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it. Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for ones you don't use. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch one show, or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you, and for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all of your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving an average person up to $720 per year. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash weekend. That's rocketmoney.com slash weekend. We're back here on The Weekend Show with Dr. Stephen Hassan. Um, let's, let's just talk about Russia for a moment, because there's this war that's playing out, which has been playing out for years in Ukraine, of course, prior to the war that we see now, it was it was done on a more kind of subtle level. And if Donald Trump reckons he could have ended the war in twenty four hours, why not? Why didn't he do it while he was president? The point is that we now have American lawmakers claiming they want the war to end, claiming it's because they want to end the bloodshed, but actually they're doing Vladimir Putin's bidding. They are saying. Russian propaganda in the House of Representatives. They're, they're saying it in TV interviews. They're proposing bills that, that Putin could have written himself. I mean, it, in just in the last few years, this sea change has happened. We couldn't have imagined this in just 
you know, five years ago. And yet now it is prevalent, it is everywhere, and it's become normalized. We're not even shocked by it. That's what worries me. It's like the media doesn't even know how to report on it. Yeah, the media has really been complicit in their ignorance. Yeah. And I'm still stunned that so many media people talk about the cult of Trump, but they won't have an expert on cults, the guy who wrote the book, on yeah. to actually educate people in a way that will actually help promote democracy. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's the same seems- way they won't have Bandy Leon, who knows about malignant narcissism. You know, she's it, an it's expert almost, on dangerousness. A, she, right. And they won't have her on for similar reasons. And I think it's because the area of mental health is such a difficult kind of subject to harness in, in 25 seconds, which is all they'll ever give you on the news. You know, I mean, here we have the opportunity to talk in depth. But I also agree that there is some implicit bias that prevents people like you from being given the floor to talk about these connections between... I mean, look, Michael Flynn was on the phone to Russia all the time at the beginning of Trump's presidency. Yep. So let's go back. The the the, the Soviet Union fell. We, we were happy. The wall came down in Germany. People like P- uh, Putin was a low-ranking KGB official who was raised in it, trained in the KGB and he felt like this was a personal assault and that he had a vendetta from that moment against America to get payback. So understand the mindset and understand there were many other people in the KGB as soon as the Soviet Union fell, they left. They came to the US and they like wanted to have a real life. And in fact, I interviewed one, a man named Yuri Schwetz, who was a source for Craig Unger's book, American Compromot, which is a book about Russian influence uh, on Donald Trump decades before he ran for president. And and when I talked to Yuri Schwetz, I said, tell me about Putin. He said, oh, I was much higher up in the KGB than him. He was a nobody, hmm. but he knew how to work the system. He knew how how to use other KGB people to create a Russian mafia. Anyway, back to when the Soviet Union fell, Anthony, I was actually invited to Moscow by psychiatrists and psychologists because American cults were rushing in to the former Soviet Union. They wanted to know what's up with cults. So I was asked to teach a workshop for a week to psychiatrists and psychologists. So there I am with a translator explaining behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. And they're like, Dr. Hassan, don't you understand you're describing the whole system of pedagogy of the Soviet Union? And don't you understand, Dr. Hassan, we would put these dissidents into psychiatric facilities because they were criticizing the regime. And then they said, oh, now we understand you are counseling us. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, if the shoe fits, yeah. <laughs> like this is the model based on communist, Chinese communist, but that was based on Russian communism, right? right? So what I found there was people, really wonderful people who had been raised in an authoritarian political cult, the Soviet Union. And I'll give you one more quick story. I was asked, would you like to speak to some high school guidance counselors from Siberia who had never met a Westerner? And I was like, definitely, please. I'm in a room with hundreds of folks. And before I start speaking, I said, is it true that you've never met a Westerner? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, you must have a million questions. So rather than me speak, ask me anything. And they, I'm not kidding, Anthony, they were like, yeah. And then finally someone went, you lecture, we take notes. <laughs> I they're, was just, like, they're just used to the authoritarian system. That that's, was that's their, their normal. That's their normal, right. We in America are so spoiled, we don't yeah. get what it's like to ra- be raised in an authoritarian cult or a society. But is that is that a reason why Donald Trump's authoritarianism is actually of interest to so many people? Because it 
enables them to, you know, maybe sit back and be a little more lazy and to be less engaged because it's like, well, that guy knows what he's talking about. He's rich. You know, they don't have those historical reference points and they don't recognize that actually what they're dealing with is is being the subject of a dictator or an authoritarian regime. I think I think that the essence isn't blaming people that they were taken in by his lies and his his malignant narcissistic charm um because you don't know that you are susceptible to a cult leader until you're under the spell as I was until I yeah. got out and went holy mackerel what happened to me and my mind had been hacked and I would say that um Social media, the hacking of Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and the algorithms and Peter Thiel and and et cetera were a big factor in 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 Trump being elected, frankly. Yeah. Um but I don't I, I think people were so programmed to hate Hillary, believing a lot of lies about Hillary and the Democrats were, were killing babies and eating yeah. them, etc. And the timing, obviously, of James Co. Uh, so they weren't uh, voting yeah. for Trump. They were voting Republican, but they didn't want they didn't want another Clinton in the White House. So he squeaked in by yeah. very few votes. Yeah. But the important thing that I want to say to everybody is that mind control is not permanent, but... The thing that is the biggest problem, Anthony, is we're addicted to our cell phones and our platforms, and people yeah. are spending eight, ten hours a day. And people need to understand these we're getting AI filtered messaging because of our likes and our dislikes, etc. Yeah. The, the algorithm knows us better than we do. And so we, people need, if you want someone to reality test any mind control situation, even if they don't believe they were in a cult, as I didn't, turn off the cell phones, don't log on, don't do the practices of the group for a week, like sleep, eat, dance, be in nature, play with your dog, play with your kids, Remember who you are and what are your values and then learn about Chinese communist brainwashing. Learn the bite model of authoritarian control and the influence continuum. And here's the here's the thing. Deliberately seek out critics and former members, right? Because if you're in a mind control cult, you're programmed. Don't believe anything that's negative. Don't listen to any former true believer, by default. So everything's fake news except us. Well, take the position I'm a smart person. I want to know whether I've been brainwashed or not. Let me learn the models. Let me talk to the most intelligent, educated critics there is. And I might add, reading The Cult of Trump has helped a MAGA person, uh, a Pam Hemphill, who is serving, two, he, she served two months for the January 6th who's re read my book now and is like, this book helped me understand how I had been yeah. brainwashed by Trump. And then once you have the, the model, the former members, then reflect back. Like, what was your earliest memory of Trump, if we're talking about the cult of Trump? What was your first impression? Was it on The Apprentice? What did, did or was it him cheating on his wife or a girlfriend in a tabloid? Like, remember that. And then th slow move. How did you start taking him seriously? And when did you start accepting everything he said without question? And with those details, people are smart enough to go, wait a minute. My wake up moment, Anthony, after five days of deprogramming was. The ex-members handed me one of Moon's own speeches to congressmen and senators. They didn't say, look how well, what a liar he is. No, they said, just read this and tell us what you think. And I'm reading this, and Moon is saying how he's surprised that Americans could think that a Korean could brainwash Americans because he likes Americans so much, and Americans are so smart. And I had met with him a hundred times in person where he said the opposite. And it was the first time in two and a half years I said, what a liar. 
And as soon as I allowed that thought into my mind consciously, I went, if he's a liar, then he can't be the Messiah. He's not a trustworthy person. How how could all of the things that I've been doing actually bring about the ideal kingdom of heaven on earth? And I cried for three hours because I had been realized I had been taken. Isn't this a technique that Trump employs at rallies, for example? He'll say things that are pertinent to that crowd. He'll say whatever to whichever crowd he's playing to. And what I don't understand is how the, you know, there are plenty of MAGA supporters that follow him around the country and they show up at different rallies and they must see how he is tweaking the same script to be you know, more, more pertinent to, to those he's in front of. In the same way as when he took all that money to go and do a Mooney's speech, he probably you know, didn't know much of what he was talking about. He just read the prompt and did he read it the with speech. a lot of confidence. But yeah, I, I, as a leader, I would accompany Moon to different venues within the group, and I heard him, you're the most special part of right. our organization. God is counting on you. And then the same rap to the, think, another yeah. part of the organization. But yeah. honestly, I couldn't critically evaluate that. I couldn't get to a point of going, wait a minute, He's yeah. just manipulating people to get more devotion and have them work Because harder. it's very performative, isn't it? And, and actually, this is a word that I've started to use a lot to describe much of what the Republicans are doing. If we take, for example, this uh, investigation that they're doing with this kind of fake whistleblower, and they're trying to investigate the Bidens and the FBI, and they had Christopher Wray, the, the FBI boss, on the stand, and he was basically saying, what are you talking about? It's so performative. It, it, is, it is just about, I don't know whether it's clickbait or looking like they're doing something or just trying to undermine institutions or maybe all of the above. But it, it's, it's got to a point now where these MAGA Republicans, Jim Jordan, James Comer, these people who are in, you know, often on these judiciary committees and on security committees, they are trying to convince the voting public, knowing that these moments are televised to distrust the FBI, to distrust the Justice Department. And or ultimately, all of this leads to getting Trump reelected and to maintain the big lie that, that the election was rigged. I mean, it's very it's very deliberate. And yeah. these people are traitors. They don't want American democracy. And anyone who supports Putin over the people of Ukraine, haven't studied history, don't understand um, what actually is happening. And a lot of the problem, Anthony, is that a lot of the regulations that were put in place to keep power in check have been dismantled yeah. systematically over decades. Groups like the Council for National Policy that inserted the founding editor of the Washington Times, the Mooney newspaper, the secret organization, conservative organization, to fight the gays and the liberals and the, and the secularists, etc. They're uh, ha believing that they're doing good, but in the meantime, it's also about power, money, and sex, I might add. Um, but... I'd say a lot of what happened with the Christopher Ray was to keep their followers programmed. You know, not about converting new people to believe it, but mostly about keeping people programmed. And I want to come back, Anthony, since you do have me on more than three minutes. We can undo this. But it starts with learning and understanding how to tell the difference between ethical influence and unethical influence. Ethical religious institutions with, with accountable leadership, transparency around funds, checks and balances, freedom to question, freedom to leave without threats or fear versus what, what is now being practiced by so many different authoritarian cults and we're not, we taxpayers are subsidizing these authoritarian cults to destroy our country and destroy our own rights. Huh? That's, that's the irony of it. I mean, 
It's almost a civil war, though, isn't it? Like a cold war. It's, it's, it it's, is a civil war psychologically. It's also yeah. information warfare with other countries. But unfortunately, they want to push for violence in the street. That's what Hitler did. That's what all the dictators ultimately do. They identify the intellectuals and the naysayers and the artists, and they they either kick them out of the country or they collect them or they kill them, so that the rest just out of fear and survival instinct shut up and go along for the ride. And Trump has talked about this in very clear language. He's talking about having freedom cities. He's talking about only employing civil servants who have the same political ideology as him and making them you know, take tests to find out if they're patriots or not. I mean, this is the language of fascism. Exactly. And, and, and no one is calling it out in the media. I mean, he's saying these things on tape. These videos are going out on his campaign website. The media is just carrying on as if it's just another day. Yeah, it's absurd. And I blame the corporate uh, owners of the, you know, the corporate media who are either complicit or they're just thinking, I want ratings and let's, yeah. let's keep it, you know, incendiary and polarized. But it's, it's a strategy that's doomed to fail because we're, we need to do something akin to what's happening in Israel now. By the way, Netanyahu is in the cult of Trump. They, Sheldon yeah. Adelson cut a deal that they would move the capital to Jerusalem and advance the settlers, all of the horrible stuff with the uh, Palestinians. And now they want to change the judiciary in Israel, but a lot of people are protesting very aggressively to stop it. But Netanyahu's in trouble because he you know, has legal problems himself, yeah. and he needs the radical right to keep himself out of jail. And so, unfortunately... Oh, and the other thing that I want to just say is that there's an estimated million Jews who emigrated from Russia to Israel... And they listen to RT TV and Russian propaganda. Yeah. And the oligarchs of Russia all have Israeli passports, I'm told. And so American Jews need to understand, yes, we want to protect Israel, but what's being done here is creating such a anti-Semitic environment around the world because people see the violence and the settlers and... And people like Netanyahu and the extremists are like, well, we'll keep you safe if you're Jewish. But by the way, they don't think I'm a Jew because I'm not Orthodox. I'm not wearing a kippah and I drive to my temple on Shabbat. So I'm not, and my, my rabbi's a woman who's conservatively trained. That's not Jewish by their criteria. And I'm like, get these extremists out of power in Israel, please. And let's get it's, back it's, to human rights. People don't understand how Russia is such a it's such a mighty country in terms of its intelligence, but also the long game that it plays. And I was watching a documentary about Yeltsin and Gorbachev, and in the background there, small head at the back, a young Vladimir Putin putting himself, you know, keeping his mouth shut, putting himself right there. I mean, he should never have succeeded Boris Yeltsin, right? He was the wrong man for the job, but he manipulated that. He faked a friendship and connection with Yeltsin. And the long game, because people say that Russia identified Trump years ago as a potential mark to, you know, make him even have the idea of running for president. Of course, he thought about running a few times, didn't he? Yep. And they certainly had a hand in him winning. As we know, he didn't win the popular vote. And in 2020, you described Cambridge Analytica and many of this kind of information warfare, but a lot of those, a lot of those servers were discovered connected to the Kremlin. Definitely. And, and so this long game is something that I think we here in the U.S. need to be a bit more thoughtful about because, you know, we're a kind of popcorn generation, right? It's, it's like, make it quick, eat it, go to sleep. The Russians don't operate like that. They, 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 they have a plan, a game plan, a, a, a bigger picture, and, and they stick to it. 
So I'll just say Americans need to, to study history a bit more and understand that we were the superpower that has kept the world away from another war, the Great War since World War II. And um, so every other country wants to take us down. And we're like, we're the America, we're special, and we're yeah. exceptional. And Team America, as World if Police. it's going to just, we're going to rest on our laurels and everyone else is going to stay s static. And it just doesn't work that way in the world. And we're in an environment now where we really have to realign what are our core values. And I say love is much more than fear. If you love your kids, there can be a, a coyote coming after your your kid. You're going to go after the coyote. You're not going to ah, go take the kid. No, 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 no. And we have to have that level of like, this is our country. And we don't want to be like Vladimir Putin's uh, cult or Xi's cult. Um, and we have to start acting like this is an emergency, because it is. Vladimir Putin obviously is dead against the idea of Ukraine joining NATO. The Republicans' answer to this is to remove the U.S. from the NATO alliance. Marjorie Taylor Greene proposed a, 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 an amendment the other day saying that the U.S. needs to leave NATO. It was like she was parroting Putin propaganda. She wasn't like she was parroting. She was. She, she was, was yeah. parroting. He literally people had need his to hand remember his... she was QAnon. Yeah. Before she was became a congresswoman, yeah. she was spouting pure mind control QAnon culture. Well, she still is, to all intents and purposes. Exactly. She's probably just saying it less to become uh you know, to be accepted a, a little more. But the the point is that it's not America that's keeping the world safe, really. It's the it's this alliance of NATO countries that's keeping the world safe. You could argue. I mean, America certainly under Trump, the idea of withdrawing from all theaters of war, even as a peacekeeping force. You know, the U.S. is is not involved in any conflicts at the moment. You know, Afghanistan, Iraq, are all kind of. I mean, we lost effectively lost those wars. The Taliban took over in Afghanistan under Donald Trump's decision to pull the troops out. You know, there was a report about that recently that actually blamed Trump and Biden for that for that withdrawal and, and what followed. But but removing the US from NATO is the 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 step that they would like to take which will destabilize the whole world. That's and what then Putin you have, wants. Yeah. Then you'll have the World percent. War Three. Yeah. Every time you hear an American politician saying, get out of NATO or let's end the war in Ukraine, it's Putin. Yeah. Putin, yeah. Putin, Putin. Yeah. It's Putin. I remember Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, do you remember when she was talking about this um, states becoming wholly Republican and wholly Democrat, and she was trying to create some kind of segregated states. And I was thinking like, She's not smart enough to come up with this type of stuff. Like, she's obviously been told to say this. A thousand this is, percent. You know, this is, she is a, a mouthpiece. She's infiltrated Congress. I mean, you know, she ran a gym. Like, there's absolutely no reason why she shouldn't still be in that gym. But she's in Congress saying stuff that is so anti-American and in the next breath claims to be a patriot. She is a puppet. She is a mouthpiece. She's using her platform but others are in control. Right, so the question is, you know it, I know it, probably a bunch of people listening to your platform know it, certainly the Midas Touch folks know it, but are we just going to be communicating to the people who get it, or are we going to start being strategic and really thinking about how are they doing what they're doing, and what can we do ethically to under cut their power and control over people's minds. And for me, one of the answers, and we're seeing this in large form, is former members of Scientology, Nexium, Bill Gothard, the Moonies, are telling their stories. 
Yes. And a lot of these folks are brilliant, accomplished professors, and they're outing their story in order to normalize, right? Because when you're in a mind control, you know, when you're not in one, you think only weak, stupid people could ever get into that. It's so right. obviously a bad thing. But when people come out and they're like, no, I believe that, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, mindlessly did X, Y, and Z. I threw out my 400 original poems, even though I was a creative writing major in college, because God wanted me to, or oh, so I man, believe. I'm sorry. So it's these former members getting more amplification, reaching out to people and saying, look, if you have someone who's in the cult of Trump or in the MAGA train, especially in the battleground states, start reconnecting with them and stop calling them names and stop saying you're in a cult and you're brainwashed because that activates the cult identity, makes them defensive and makes them feel persecuted. The yeah. opposite of what you want. What you Can you want talk about other cults? Can you talk about, oh, watch that documentary you about Nexium, for example? You say, I, I just watched this. I'd love for you to watch it. I'd love to get your opinion, and right. let's talk about it. And that might trigger something in their own minds about their own situation. It That's definitely plants for. seeds. The two biggest areas where you can have robust, real conversations is about Chinese communist brainwashing, because we know they're operating programs with at least a million to two million yeah. people right now yeah. aside from the general society and yeah. pimps and traffickers and how they recruit and groom and indoctrinate people to be sex slaves or labor trafficking slaves MAGA people will listen to those discussions and you can talk about the influence continuum and bite model and get into the details of it and what I want to say is Start by reconnecting with people that you know and care about. And even if you haven't talked to them in four years, just say, I miss you. You're my yeah. uncle. You're my cousin. You're my yeah. nephew. You're my father. You're my mother. Choose love. And, and, and show v pictures of the happy times when you were together, videos, sing songs to get built, rebuild the warmth. Yes. And, and then talk about these other things and ask their opinion. And those respectful questions will get people to step back because they care about you and, and they see that you're respected. Oh, and the other thing is that I recommend is, hey, if you understand this stuff, you can afford to say, persuade me. I'll yeah. join you. Yeah. And then That's if they say, watch these 50 videos, I yeah. say, Pick one that was particularly important for you. Let's watch it together. We'll pause it and discuss it. Then yeah. it'll be my turn to share one and we'll watch it together. So in other words, you're you're not being like this and talking down to them. You're like, hey, we care about each other. Let's go for what's real and what's true. Because neither of us want to believe wrong things or things that are going to be contrary to our own best interests. It's great. It's great advice. I mean, look, it's the hardest thing to answer, and you answer it so well, because there are so many families that have been torn apart because of politics in the last five or six years. We have to take one more break, and then we're going to come back finally and talk about climate change and uh, try and work, work out how to convince people who don't believe it's a thing that it's actually a thing. Dr. Stephen Hassan, back in a moment. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding, so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver-infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, so you get a better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice if not nicer than bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria 
Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash weekend to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code weekend at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash weekend and use the code weekend to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. That's trymiracle.com slash weekend to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made for sponsoring this episode. We're back. It's The Weekend Show. I'm Anthony Davis. This is Dr. Stephen Hassan. We are trying to kind of get our heads around how we communicate with MAGA Republicans who've been lost to the cult of Trump. It's been the hottest last couple of weeks in, in history. Um, we've been told for the last 60 years that carbon emissions are the cause of the of the planet heating, the planet warming, global warming, global dimming. There's so many subjects, you, you don't have to go far to read about it. The media have, you know, done their best, but I still see them covering extreme weather events and they don't mention climate change. And it should be in every single report. It should be the first thing they start with. Look what climate change has done today. But for some reason, they, they choose not to. Maybe they think it's polarizing. When did climate change become politicized to the extent that, you know, I heard Ron DeSantis again say, oh, that's Democrat stuff. It's, 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 I tried to think, you know, is it because they gave the job to John Kerry to kind of be the one to talk about it all those years ago? Or, you know, when, when was it weaponized? Because, you know, unlike politics itself, climate change will affect everybody, Democrats and Republicans alike. Right. We're all we're all going to we're all going to burn. And no one seems to be making a case for the fact that the, the, the denial, the climate denial is insane. It must be part of the cult mentality. Yes, it is. But remember, the tobacco industry knew that smoking cigarettes caused cancer. Yeah. And they hired experts to say, nope, it's not smoking. Right. But they knew that it was, but they deliberately lied, just as the Sacklers did with OxyContin. It's not addictive. Yeah. Keeps selling it. And it's this greed and selfishness. And I blame Ayn Rand and that whole objectivism cult that says selfishness is good and altruism is evil or the social Darwinistic aspect of, well, I have more money, therefore I'm a superior person to you, versus yeah. I got lucky and my parents had wealth, like Donald yeah. Trump. And yeah. if I, my family didn't have money, I'd be like yeah. a grifter on the street corner. Yeah. But in any case, um, one needs to go back to each individual person. I mean, we can talk about messaging from the media, but my understanding is that people who are weather people who do try to say it's global climate crisis, they start getting threats against their personhood oh, right. and they retire because they yeah. want to protect their family. Yeah. And they and and it's that kind of intimidation, coercion and fear that's being used to silence the truth. So coming back to people who are experiencing these these horrific traumatic events, it's 120 degrees in Arizona this week, right? right. And I mean, and in, and we've had these horrendous floods in New England, particularly yeah. in Vermont recently yeah. here. So but the question is approaching someone who says it's not you know, it's not man-made uh, uh, fossil fuel driven stuff. Interesting to hear you say that. Can you explain to me why you believe that, please? And because 
I want to just cite a book called The Knowledge Illusion by two cognitive neuroscientists, but you can look it up what their names are. But what they did was scientific experiments that show that people walk around believing things, but they have no idea what the evidence is or why they believe it. And they use a thing like, how does a toilet flush? Like, what's the mechanism that actually makes the water go down? And um, and they use it to explain that people just know they flip the lever and it, it goes away. But people depend on other people who are experts if they need details to explain the physics or to explain the mechanisms of it. And what's happened since the invention of the internet is people now have the illusion you can go on Google and know anything. So they almost, you know, have this inflated sense of knowledge yeah. when in fact they really don't understand much at all the, the, the very basics or the but very is this, is this like dunning kruger effect yes is this like a, a similar thing just explain dunning kruger because it's fa i find it fascinating um i'm not at the moment uh going to coherently be able to explain it can you <laughs> do it anthony <laughs> probably not coherently but i i, I, I know i know it, it is, but i'm on yeah. a i'm on a track in my brain just to, okay to, well to, all i was going to say is that it, it probably because i'm very interested in american exceptionalism i read books about that and mm. the idea that you know america and americans have this kind of greater sense of self self and it and it and it and as you describe with the toilet system and not knowing how it works what what it is that gives people supreme confidence and the confidence of their convictions and to argue their case without knowing any of the detail or not having done any of the work and and isn't isn't this part of the problem and also part of the success of America, you know, winning the space race and all of the great achievements of, of the United science, States? It's science and it's right. real medicine. And by the way, I looked up Dunning-Kruger. It's exactly yeah. the point I was making that right. people overestimate their ability to say they know things when they don't. Yes. But what part of fourth generation warfare is attacking expertise and attacking science. Yeah. And what I want to say about the brilliance of science and why humanity can now live to 100 when we used to live to 20 or 30 is because we have this approach to learning that we have a belief and then we do evidence-based testing to either support the belief or get rid of the belief. And we're willing to get rid of another a belief if there's a better explanation for something. And that's how science progresses. So we learn more. When you have a belief system with certainty, that's black mm -hmm. and white, us versus them, good versus evil, you think you know everything, you filter out anything that doesn't enter this little narrow gate and what happens over time is you get smaller and smaller. You don't get any new information the, or the new The pandemic was a perfect example of this, wasn't it? When, you know, the pandemic obviously affected the whole world. But, you know, Republicans in America just made out that it was, you know, it was just done by Democrats because they, and, and then blaming China and a lab and all these conspiracy theories. But the thing that bothered me the most about that was people who have no clinical experience at all who knew nothing, have never even had a conversation about a pandemic or about right. the way infectious diseases spread, suddenly all became experts and all claimed that, oh, the vaccine's not being tested, and which was just utter garbage. You know, it might have been fast-tracked, but that's because normally it takes forever to get these things done. So they, every scientist in the world put down their tools and started focusing on these vaccines. And that's why they came out so fast. And, and you know, well, the you and I are alive because of it. The technology had been worked on for 30 years, but right. now they had a, a, a real-life situation where millions of lives were on the line. So they took yeah. the risk to, yeah. to rush to human experimentation. Yeah. And but, they did the right thing. Absolutely. But the thing is, is it, coming back to reality here, is that we're in this spaceship Earth together, this beautiful glowing globe, and we need to preserve it. And we yeah. need to approach people where they're at. 
if they I just was listening to a story about how in Florida insurers don't want to renew insurance for for waterfront property or they want to make it astronomical now people are going to be in a situation where they're they don't want to believe that global climate change but they now they have to pay or they have to try to get rid of their house and move inland yes right so there's a point where reality enters and it's at those places where family members, friends, and neighbors can gently say, yeah, I used to believe that there was no such thing as global climate change. When Al Gore did The Inconvenient Truth, I thought it was propaganda. But now there's a lot of evidence that this is a real effect, and it's getting worse, and we're going to spend more and more money if we don't do the stuff now, it's going to be catastrophically expensive going down the line. Biden's done actually this quite cleverly with infrastructure. Yeah, He's baked all the climate change uh, systems that are required into the infrastructure bill. And he's now talking about climate change as jobs. And so he sees wind turbines and solar panels, all of, the, all of everything that we need for renewables as jobs, as good paying jobs. So instead of talking about them as if they're from the Green New Deal or the Green Agenda or, you know, the happy clappy stuff, he's talking about it as if it's jobs and, you know, security for, for people. But where we, think where we have to be work. careful is a lot of the fossil fuel uh, companies and countries created these environmental friendly businesses that are getting government funds, but their goal isn't to develop what they said they're developing. They want it to stall things as long as possible so they can have as much, you know, greedy cash as possible. It's the same as the tobacco industry that you describe. It's just like, right. You know, but coming back to, you know, if you love your children and your grandchildren and you use them as a motivation, then you can't be complacent. No. Like, if you think, well, I'm s- almost 70, I've got another 20 years, it'll be the next generation's problem. Um, you can do that, but that's mm. I have a 20-year-old son. I want to think about his best interest and my cousins and 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 grandchildren of of my sisters etc so for me i i don't think there's an option to be uh casual about this they can't even show compassion for children that get executed in school shootings i mean this is the the thing right. that i struggled to overcome it's like right. if you've got maga republicans both lawmakers and supporters who would rather protect their guns than than protect their children, how are you ever going to convince them on climate change? So again, it's about a a business or a set of entities with a vested interest, and they're using the most sophisticated psychological mechanisms, including media, including social media, to... um, divert people's attention or misdirect um, legislation or buy off politicians and and corrupt them and and I just really think greed is so um, harmful and yeah. ultimately self-destructive because again we're on one planet think about it if we're all on one rowboat if we're if, yeah. if we thought of the world as everybody on one rowboat and it's leaking, like, what are the options here? Let's put it off for another decade yeah. and deal with well, it. We have, we have nowhere else to live. We're I mean, leaking. this is the point. We're, we're, we're going Maybe this down. is why Elon Musk is desperate to get us or get himself to Mars and wants to colonize another planet because... Yeah, I'd know, love to counsel Elon Musk, actually. Yeah, I bet you would. He's, bet he's you would. on the spectrum, and I think he would love to look at my influence continuum and I could have a very interesting conversation with him because yeah. I, I I do think that he has uh, adopted some very destructive uh, beliefs. That Including is, the Putin support, which yeah, he's putting out course. in tweets all the time. Of course. Yeah. Okay. The bottom line is, is, is that I want to 
put forth a message of hope and that yeah. we need each other. Um, all these individuals say selfishness is good, selfish, selfish gene. It's like, no, humans have evolved because of cooperation, because we have fundamental trust in each other. That and if, compassion. If you're hungry and I give you some bread, if yeah. I get hungry, you're going to want to reciprocate with me because yeah. you remember that I gave you the bread when you were hungry. You know, and I'll, it goes, I'll just it goes back to goes back to simple Christianity at the end of the day, or right? Judaism. You know, I mean, or Judaism Hillel or said, any of these "Don't do to mo- others mo- what you don't yeah. want done to you." I just yeah. want to mention uh, um, uh, Arno Michaelis uh, was a neo-Nazi white power uh, devotee. He had a, a music band and recruited people, and what got him out of it was was his Jewish employer saw he was hungry one day and he and and the guy took half of his sandwich and gave it to him and when he went and he had money and he went to mcdonald's and there was a black uh uh, server who was smiling at him and was kind and nice to him all these things were were dissonant in his ideology and then he had a kid and he's like being hateful sucks like i i like Hanging out with people that are fun and that are yeah. that care about me. I, I think about that with Trump and Flynn and all of these characters. I think you guys must be so unhappy, you know, just no joy, no to have a clear conscience and to be able to just enjoy time with your friends and family without worrying about all that, all those lies that you've told or all that propaganda that you've spewed. You know, it's it's a lot. It's, you know, it's I'm, miserable to be a malignant narcissist because yeah. honestly, you don't trust anybody. Right. And you have this hole in your self esteem that you constantly are trying to fill from other people outside of you who you don't trust. And it's a miserable existence, actually. We, we have to finish, but I, I always adore these conversations. There's so much to learn. And I'm so grateful to you for your. Your activism, as well as your academia, it's very, very helpful and important. Thanks so much. I'll just say come to Freedom of Mind and check out my website, my blogs. I did a great, very interesting interview with former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman recently. Yeah. And we talked about him growing up in the Mormons and leaving it and everybody shunning him. It was fascinating. There's a lot of interesting content and... um Educate yourself, because really we need to be prepared to understand just how much more information warfare is coming down the pike between now and the presidential election with deep fakes and more AI stuff. So, like, let's band together and uplift each other with values. All right. Dr. Stephen Hassan, thank you very much. Thanks for, for having me, Anthony. See you. On ya. the weekend show. Bye. I'm Anthony Davis. Subscribe to MAGA Uncovered, my new show with Ron Filipkowski on Wednesdays. Don't forget to support me and independent journalism on patreon.com slash 5-Minute News. Uh, the 5-Minute News daily podcast drops every morning. You can hear me tell you what's going on around the world while you make a coffee. And join me next week with a brand new special guest and three more factual news stories to discuss on the 5-Minute News weekend show with Midas Touch.